isn't this exciting? <laughs> I am so happy to be here. Wow. So quick, quick audience survey. How many people are here from outside of the UK? Wow. If you're from outside of the UK and you're in the first row, where are you from? Germany. Germany? Netherlands. Netherlands. Puerto Rico? Netherlands. 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 US. Israel. Israel. We love binaries. And you know, when you think of how sexual orientation is constructed in most places by most people, it's constructed as having two boxes, gay and its opposite, right, straight, right? And of course, in this like, binary construction, we have one box that's more valuable and more honored than the other, culturally, right? The straight box is much more valuable. Not by us, by them. <laughs> the straight box is considered you know, a much better box, right? And a much bigger box. And the gay box is considered a subordinate box, so that is good. And, and in between those two boxes, like the boxes are considered to have these like, solid walls. They're boxes, they have walls, solid steel walls, right? And lids to keep the people in, right? And in this kind of social construction, they're separated by this big void, like they're opposite sexualities. And we even use terms like opposite, like straight is the opposite of gay. And they're separated by the void, the void of nothingness. And I think that's another challenge to understanding bisexuality is that people don't have a hard time imagining any space between the two. And the only time people can imagine something between straight and gay is when it's a transitory thing, when someone might be sliding from one box to the other. But it's not seen as a temporary place. It's seen as an unstable location that isn't real because it's in the void. And this is something that's a big challenge for us. And I think that one thing that helped me not be so frustrated by this is understanding that we do this with a lot of different things. We like to put everything into binaries. <laughs> 